Morning, Laura. Good morning. Thank you guys for chatting with me. I really appreciate it. Great, great to be here. So let me ask you guys, first of all, a little bit about the uh, Tahoe people. Did I say that right? Uh, this movie Tuhoi. introduces us to Tuhoi. Yeah, you got to pronounce it. You got so it. So we do get taken straight into their culture and some of their story. Can you explain a little bit about who they are to us? Uh, they live in, in the hills. It's 99% uh, of, the, of, the, of our area is so. Uh, probably about twice, twice the size of Auckland area, and uh, in the um, in in the uh, sort of kind of in the in the uh, east east coast of the, of, of of the North Island, mm. and uh, so that's who we are. So we um, in the valley, beautiful yeah. deep valley people. The deep valley, it's a beautiful. You seen it on uh, on the on on the screen uh, with the with the mountain, the beautiful. It's it's just like that. Yeah. In, uh, and it's just like living in a postcard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's who we are, you know. And uh, we are the original people too. We are, are the original one of the original people that connected to the original people before the Great Migration came about. Right. So we've so been here, been in Aotearoa a long time. Yeah. A long time. <laughs> and for all for all the beauty, there's a lot of hardship, of course, that they experience, that you experience, that we see in Maru. The events of that day. Why were they ones that you, as a director, wanted to wanted to focus on? Tommy and I have a personal relationship. Our, my father and my father-in-law were great friends of Papa Tommy. When two thousand and seven, October fifteenth happened, there was shockwaves through New Zealand, but there were shockwaves from all of us who were who knew that these shockwaves shouldn't exist, mm. and that uh, this is they've reached this course of action through a really misleading lens. So the opportunity wasn't just about fixing the narrative, it was actually about bringing the world beyond the narrative, beyond the known narrative. And I think that's always an interesting um, position for any storyteller to, to take when you have a relationship to humanize, how do we bring a human element to a story? Not for the purposes of um, shock and awe, but to actually create a relationship of understanding. And that's the opportunity mm. here. Yeah. And, and Tama, what was your experience on that day and your relationship to the story that we see brought forward in Maru? Well, well. <laughs> it's a big question, I know. I, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I am one of the many other people that during my period of time in the 70s that um, have been. Um, uh, being uh, pretty loud and having a voice and to be able to put a voice out there because I, I never had a voice here as a, as a child. I didn't get my voice till I was 18. Mm. And, uh, and I always had this thought in my back of my mind for a very long time before I opened up. It took me 18 years just to, to get my voice out there. Mm. Mm. And there are different layers because we, we come from a generation with the racism pretty huge in our country. Mm. And uh, around politics, about the Vietnam War, about the what's happening in South Africa, it's a global thing that are happening there. So I, I, I am one of many others of the of that time that um that spoke up for the voiceless. Yeah, and also um, Tamir is this. He's a living symbol for the outcasts and the underdogs. Mm. And in terms of what happened to him on uh, the fifteenth of October, well, he was public he was target number one and um he didn't need to be because the the police had an opportunity to ask and answer any question that they had because papa tummy's door is always open it's never locked so there was always an opportunity for for them to to sit down and have a cup of tea and ask yeah. the questions yeah but, they could tell me what you're up to <laughs> we hear you I'm training up in the bush yeah are you running a terrorist camp? Yes or no? Yeah. Mm. yeah they could have just said, no, nah, come on, we'll, we'll go and do a bit of pig hunting or do a bit of healing. Yeah. Or so, so it's a it's a it's an assumption that people will assume things from a long distance. People mm. get real paranoid. It's a real paranoid. There's a bit of, par of paranoia. When when your voice starts to get really loud, then they go, Ooh, what's up? Yeah. Mm. up? You know, so so, so the, the film is a, is a whole lot of different layers of that. It really is, and it's, of course, going to prompt so many different discussions. But I think one thing it, it makes us question 
is why there can be a lack of willingness to understand. Why didn't people knock on doors and ask questions that they had the opportunity to? From a bigger picture point of view, not just relating to the events of that particular day in 2007, but beyond that as well, why do you think people can have a resistance to understand perspectives other than their own in, in the context of race and culture? This, this is the most important conversation, yeah. right? And um, it's, it's followed, you know, 2007, looking back at, back at it retrospectively in 2022, it's been time stamped with this, uh, with this word of, well, the police overreacted. But I'll tell you what, the scars and the trauma is real. And we can't just succumb and go, well, overreaction, let's move on. Because how do we move on? Because the people that were overreacted are all bearing real um, emotional trauma from this moment and aren't able to move on unless we all understand and all wrap our hands around each other and all lift each other for a while and all listen for a while. We don't need to be carrying the ball game well, it's time to move on. No. Um, let's just stay there for a while so we can really um, just feel what you felt. And they, they backed themselves up into this corner where they felt that the only way of showing skin in the game in 2007 was to take this course of action and not door knock. And that compromised a lot of uh, important people who were responsible in that in Tuhoi. And as well as they were responsible in... Um, protecting our communities so it, you know mudu is not a cheap shot we're not trying to just uh, shock and awe people and um, throw some fireworks around we actually want to have these conversations where we can um, see each other for the first time listen to each other for the first time and we've done it on this big cinematic canvas with all these great performances mm. um, and hopefully bringing some real life force to the community that can be felt and appreciated. Mm. And it's a complex story because for, at one level, it's really hard to define who the good guys are and who the bad guys are because you've got police who are caught between the tension of do I honour my badge or do I honour my people? And then you've got some of the police who are really hard after their cause wondering, actually, hang on a minute, what is motivating my cause? Can I trust how the media have portrayed this? For you as a filmmaker, as a writer, how did you work out who was right, who was wrong, and where to kind of weigh those qualities, those qualities up in the characters? Um, through a lot of head button, a lot of brick walls. <laughs> 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 because, you know, it's so you want to create a complex canvas and chessboard of characters where it's not simple black and white, where it <laughs> takes us beyond these cliches where the connections and belief systems on both sides of the line are uh, all real for everyone. And that's that's always the artistic um, uh, opportunity. So we had a great time writing this. Um, just got back from Busan and Toronto, and that's what they a lot of the audiences over there spoke about after they spoke about how awesome Pavatami and Cliff was. Was, <laughs> you know, going, the, why, there's no black and white here. There's a lot of gray. And it's like, well, that's, that's the human experience. And entering into the valley through Gallagher's boots and, and have that sort of crumble away under him makes for interesting storytelling. And I hope that it's gripping uh, and an emotional ride for uh, an audience and it sort of defies everyone's expectations. Mm. And I'd love for each of you to weigh, on in, weigh in on this question because as someone from Australia, for audiences in Australia, I think looking on at New Zealand, there's a lot to respect about the way that the Māori culture is so visible, I think, in you know, in, in aspects of everyday life. Yes, there's challenges, but I think it you, you guys seem to be a few steps ahead of where we are in Australia in our relationship to our Indigenous population. How do you feel like you guys have, have got there and how can we move forward in, I think, the visibility and the engagement we have with our Indigenous cultures? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that, that, that's a big one. You know, I I I have been in, involved with the with the with the indigenous people of Australia for a long, long time. Because my, my children from here too, they they come they fuck up up what they their genealogy from here, mm. and uh, I I I hear the same the same conversation just you just talking about now, you know about you know about the Aboriginal people. You know, your your followers are different, but 
No, 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 we're, we're not different. I think we're all the same. You know, we, we, we just got to find a way to change our, 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 um, our attitudes and the yeah. way we talk to each other. You know, and I think they're really important that we, we don't see people. Um, and listen you know, to when, each when other. I come to Australia, they're, they're, they're always talking about the Aboriginal people, blah, 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 blah. It, it, was, it didn't sound nice to me. You know, and I challenged those people right there and then, and right there, right at the time. In, this is back in the early 70s. Uh, but I think the film will be really good for to, to bring here around those particular issues mm. and what 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 is happening in the village, like the village in Ruato, and 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 and, and the system assuming thing from a long distance mm. or paranoia, you know, and and that and the, the, the different layers that uh, within Muru itself. That I think there will be uh, be really really a film that uh, Australia need to see. Mm. One, one of the words that has crept into our societal um, lexicon recently is co-partnership, co-partnership. And what people hear, especially this um, uh, one, one set of ears, hears that and feels like they're losing something. Yeah, yeah. I am losing power. And it's like, that's not what's been spoken yeah, yeah. about <laughs> because what we've been able to do in, in New Zealand in terms of cultural progress is because of Papa Tamis. And because we have many great women back in New Zealand. Uh, so we, we've been moving forward on, on uh, our cultural elders who have been able to contribute at very high levels and influential levels to help people understand that uh, their culture, with culture comes wisdom, with culture comes guardianship. With culture comes new narratives. With culture comes new perspectives, as well as beautiful old languages and mm. customs. So it's how we listen to each other. It's yeah. always how we contribute and participate with each other. Yeah, it's so wonderful hearing your perspectives. And what a brilliant job you've done with this movie as well, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time today. Okay, thank you for thank your great you questions. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>